Ezekiel chapter 7. Last week we looked at the second point of this seventh chapter. The first one being the end has come. And then last week the second point being an evil has come and as we seen and looked at it, it was evil that God was bringing upon them for the evil, the wickedness that they had committed. So it brings us to the third point in the seventh chapter tonight, and that is time for destruction. Time for destruction. Let's read verses 7 through 10 tonight. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land, the time is come the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Not the echo of the mountains, not that which is hollow and vain, nothing there. The word of the Lord is not hollow, it's not vain. <laughs> now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thy abominations that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, that smiteth. <coughs> Behold, the day. Behold, it is come. The morning is gone forth. The rod hath blossomed. Pride hath budded. Time for destruction. The time has come. The set time, the, the appointed time has come. The time for the afflict, inflicting of this evil. To all of God's purposes, there's a time. You see, he, he purposed them, but along with the purposing, he purposed the time. In which that purpose would have its fulfillment in that, in the, uh, or its accomplishments. Including the time of reckoning. The time of Recompense. When he recompenses to the wicked. When he renders to them according to their deeds. According to their works. And he reveals his righteous judgment. Did you notice that? I am the Lord. I am Jehovah. Verse 9. That smiteth. God rules. 
And we like the thought that God is sovereign. That he rules, that he reigns. <laughs> he does as he pleases. <laughs> But we live our lives as though we're not so sure about that. Turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes. Book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3. Verse 1, most of you can probably quote this verse without knowing you could quote it until you turn there and see what it is. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. What does that mean? To everything, there is a purpose. <laughs> that is, it was purposed by God. <laughs> and there is a time for every purpose. <laughs> Look at verse 17. I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. <laughs> Do you know he's going to judge the righteous and the wicked? Well, if you've been in Brother Jesse's Sunday school class, you should know that. As he just covered the judgment seat of Christ and gotten into the and covered the uh, judgment of the nations and then has gotten into the great white throne judgment which is the judgment of the wicked to everything There's a purpose and a time. And there, that is in the hands of God. And he is going to judge the righteous. And judge the wicked. Look with me at the book of Acts. In the seventeenth chapter, in verse thirty one, Acts seventeen thirty one says, Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. Listen, just, just as sure as he raised him from the dead, it is that sure that he is going to judge the world, and he is the righteous judge. Therefore, he's going to judge it in righteousness. Amen. Not going to be uh, none of this uh, partial judgment. And showing favoritism to this group and, and being harsh with this group. No, it's going to be equal. It's going to be done in equity. Turn with me to the Psalms. The Psalms in chapter 98. Looking at verse 9 of this psalm, before the Lord, 
That is, the word before there goes to, in the face of the Lord, in the face of the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth. In other words, he is proclaiming his, his, his appearance. <laughs> The whole world is going to look upon him. For he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge this world and the people with equity. The judgment is going to be a righteous judgment. It's going to be done in equity. No partiality shown. To the wicked, destruction. <laughs> to the righteous, well, rewards or loss of rewards. How many of you think that the judgment seat of Christ will be judged for sins? I'm glad I didn't see no hands. <laughs> yeah, our sins were judged at Calvary. In the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Judgment seat of Christ is not going to be about our sins. But it's going to be for faithful service rendered to the Lord. So this judgment of his is going to reveal his righteous judgment as he comes and judges. And do you know that even that is predetermined? Amen. <laughs> That's predetermined. Turn with me to uh, the 33rd Psalm. And look here at verse 11. The counsel or the purpose of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts, devices of his heart to all generations. They standeth forever. Someone explain that to me. That means they were purposed in eternity. They were purposed before the foundation of the world. They were purposed before ever man was created. <laughs> They're eternal. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 25. And in verse 1. O Lord, thou art my God. Amen. I will exalt thee. Well, amen. Right? Sometimes we don't do very well at that, right? I will praise thy name. Well, there again, amen. Sometimes we don't do very well at that. For thou hast done wonderful things. <laughs> oh, you see, when we get to thinking about the wonderful things that he's done, then we really claim him as our God, and then we, we exalt him, and then we praise him. 
Well, what's that tell you? It tells me I need to think more of the wonderful things that he's done. I need to sit and contemplate them more. more. <coughs> Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Thy counsels of old. How old are they? Forever. Well, we just read they were forever, didn't we? <laughs> so they are old. They're ancient. <laughs> We'd say. And it says here that they are faithfulness and truth. <laughs> Just the very fact that <laughs> all his counsel, all his purposes of old, of ancient, of eternal, before the foundations of the earth. And ever since he created heaven and earth, they've been coming to pass. It speaks of his faithfulness. <laughs> and it speaks that they are true. Yes, they are predetermined. Determined in council halls of eternity. Before the foundation of the world. Isaiah, the 46th chapter. Like these two verses. Well, I like them all. <laughs> They're good. Isaiah 46 and in verses 10 and 11. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, but they're purposed, <laughs> But they're not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, my purpose shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. <laughs> Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass, I have purposed it. I will also do it. <laughs> Everything that he has purposed, he will do it, and if he didn't purpose it, it won't be done. So what's that tell you about everything that is, is coming to pass? <laughs> he purposed it. Now, just let that sink in. That, that is hard for even us sovereign grace Baptists to, to grab hold of. Amen. Psalm 76, 10 is the only way I can reconcile that. And I don't understand this. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. That is the evil and the wickedness of man. <laughs> shall praise him, shall accomplish his purposes, and the remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. You see, as I sit and look at the wickedness in the world, as I sit and look at the wickedness in my own heart and life, it is hard for me to understand how that can praise him, how, he can, how that can bring to pass his purposes. But it does. And I have to rest in that. And I have to rest assured with this fact that, that he's working all that out for my good. Amen. Wow. <laughs> that means even if it comes to the point in this country that we're captured by the wicked and tortured, it's for our good. And I tell you what, I won't be the first Christian that it happened to.
I scared you all out of being Christians now, didn't I? <laughs> all I can tell you is every one of the apostles, every one that's been martyred, they didn't stand steadfast in themselves. When the time came, God's grace was there, giving them peace. Brother Andy Doherty, pastor up in Ohio, Wilmington, Ohio, pastors Wilmington Baptist Church, or Wilmington Baptist Temple up there. I think he's pastored it for about 17, 18 years, something like that. And he found out just a couple weeks ago that he's got pancreatic cancer that has metastasized. It's inoperable. And they give him about three months to live. And he wrote an article, posted it, said God's given him peace with it. He knows the Lord. He has peace. And he just wants those that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ to come to know him so that they could have the same peace that he has. He said, pray for my wife, pray for my family. But see, he's got peace with it. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. You see, and as we sat here in our pew and, and nothing's wrong with us, it, it scare, scares us to death in the flesh. But we don't have God's grace to go through that right now because he hasn't called on us to go through it. But when he calls on if he calls on us to go through it, his grace will be there. <laughs> Allowing us to draw upon it. This thought of destruction coming has been repeated again and again. Again, we got to say it. How many times did we say it was repeated in this chapter? Look at verse 10. We read it again. Now, I mean, in verse 7 he said it, again in verse 10, he says, Behold the day! Behold, it has come! The morning has gone forth! <laughs> we'll have more to say about the morning. The rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded, that day has, has been long time coming. Long time. But at last, he says it's here. It's come. There's no more, no more opportunity for you to repent. The end has come. The time has come. The day draws near. The day of trouble is near. Verses, verse 3, Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. We read verse 7 earlier. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land, the time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. I'm not, I'm not just, just echoing this call, a hollow echo. Verse 12, the time is come, the day draws near, 
Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. Well, it just keeps repeating it. Do you believe it yet? <laughs> that's, what, that's what I would think if it was being repeated to me over and over again. And it is. As we're studying this, it is being repeated over and over again. <laughs> Am I taking the admonition? Am I taking the fact that, that there's coming the great white throne judgment? The Lord Jesus Christ is coming in the air. And He's coming to get us. And how many of you know what happens after that? <laughs> the great white throne. Uh, not the great white, excuse me, the judgment seat of Christ. Did I say that first time too? The judgment seat of Christ. Is what comes in. That's the one that, that we, we the saved, we that are in Christ Jesus, will stand before him at to receive the rewards or loss of rewards, whichever the case may be. They have been threatened. We've looked at that in the past. They have been warned. And they have been threatened. I mean... When did the chapter start? Chapter 4? Chapter 3? Chapter 2? I mean, all this began? I don't know how, how long a period of time had, had elapsed over uh, from chapter, chapter 2 to, to chapter 7 here. There was a time when, uh, what was it, the, about the fourth chapter? Uh, where he had received the word of the Lord and then he had, then he had gone to the, to the people there dwelling by the river. Then it starts out. He's told to make a model. That model is to picture the encampment of Jerusalem by a great army. <laughs> Went through chapter 5, chapter 6, and now it comes to chapter 7. He says, that's it. The end has come. And evil has come. Destruction. It's time for destruction. They had been warned and they had been told that, that if they were disobedient that this would happen. We read it over and over again in Deuteronomy before they, before they ever went into the land. And, and yes, I, 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 at times I say it, it's as if God knew. Well, God did know. God knew before the foundation of the world what his people would be. When I say that, his people, I'm talking about Israel. He knew what they would be. He knew that they would be a rebellious people, a, a hard neck, stiff neck people. And he knows about that about us at times. Verse 7, he said, the morning has come. In verse 10, the morning has gone forth. The day of trouble has come. The day of destruction is here. The word morning in, in these in instances means 
at the end of night. And day is just about to break forth. New Testament talks about the day is far spent. <laughs> talks about the morning coming. <laughs> that was over 2,000 years ago. How much closer is it today? Reading Brother Tweet's newsletter today, and he, he says, it's soon. It's very soon. All the events in the world today are pointing to it. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. It was in it was in the morning. It was early. The judgment was to begin. It's like we're gonna get this thing taken care of. It can't go on. Take care of it now. As I thought about that, I couldn't, couldn't help but think uh, uh, the church and church discipline and, in regards to the Lord's Supper, even. Take care of it. Take care of it before. <laughs> Take care of it early. Jeremiah chapter 21, verse 12. said, O house of David, Thus saith the Lord, execute judgment in the morning and deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor, lest my fury go out like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. In other words, if you won't execute it early in the morning, then I will come and execute it in the morning. And it will be severe. He says. Turn with me to the book of Psalms. Chapter 101. Look at verse 8. He says, I will early destroy all the wicked of the land. You see, in the morning, early. The night is over. It's, it's the end of the night. It, it's going to be dawning the day. <laughs> that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. And he says, that'll be early. Early in the morning. Turn with me back to the book of Hosea, chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10. Look at verse 15. So shall Bethel do unto you because of your great wickedness. In a morning shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off. He says, Israel's judgment shall be in the morning. And so is it, is it a, a weird thing that he say, says, the end has come, the day is at hand, the day is near, the morning has come, the morning has gone forth. <laughs> because that's when judgment is going to be. In the morning. Well, we'll quit there tonight. Next week... Oh, put it in the wrong spot. Next week we want number four. Point number four. We'll be taking a look more at God's wrath. He says, he says that God's judgment, the, the end, the, the destruction that is coming, it's God's wrath. It's his anger.
upon them. Shall we stand?